everyone, it's Alyssa. I'm coming to you from the library for today's teen and adult craft. We are taking care of ourselves today. Today's craft is all about self-care. It's about making yourself feel good and it's just about being happy. And also one of my favorite things to do is just experimenting with scents and essential oils and having fun. And you know, I don't know about any of you, but throughout all of this, I have found that the amount of time that I spend in the bath with a good book has very much so increased. So I decided that I wanted to share with you some really wonderful recipes, um, a fun recipe, and some relaxing things that'll help elevate your bath time. Even if you're like me and you just have like just a little like shower tub combo, I still relax in the bath because it's just been so nice to grab a book and just sit where it's nice and quiet um, and enjoy. And I, I love I love making self-care and bath uh, and body products. I think they're so much fun and they're usually one of our more popular crafts when we're able to do them here in the library. So all of the ingredients are really easy to get. You can get essential oils pretty much anywhere nowadays. You can also go ahead online and if you know you're not sensitive to fragrance, you can order perfume oils, which is a lot of what I am using today. Um, and also a lot of the ingredients that we're using you can find at stores and health food stores like coconut oil and cornstarch and bubble bath and sea salt and oat flour and coconut milk powder or goat milk powder or powdered milk, whatever it is. Um, there are so many substitutions and everything. Everything is really easy to get. These ingredients are very common or you can do what I did. I ordered them online because I didn't want to go to the grocery store. So so easy to get and you can buy a big package and you can make so many and they make great gifts too i know uh my coworker marie and i love to give homemade bath products as gifts as well because you can personalize them with scent or color for a particular person and it's a really nice special little touch so you can buy big big bags of supplies and you can give some a little something to everybody that you know leave it on their doorstep away from your car and say here's a treat for you or a treat for yourself <laughs> so i'm going to show you how to do a couple of things we're going to make um a a oat and milk bath which is really soothing for your skin we're going to make a salt soak and we're going to make one that's really fun we're going to make a bubble bath play-doh which is great for kids and just great for to have fun with uh for yourself you love a good bubble bath i love a good bubble bath and i'll try some different scents and ingredients throughout the whole thing and we'll see what happens okay so here we go okay so the first recipe that we're going to make is we're going to make our bubble bath play-doh so what we're starting with is bubble bath. Uh, so this one I you can get anywhere, get them at drugstores, order them online. This one is eucalyptus and lavender. It's going to smell very soothing and relaxing. So I'm starting with about a quarter of a cup. I think I need a little bit more. I don't have my measuring cups, so I'm just eyeballing it. This is kind of all about ratios. So you just wanna pay attention to your ratios if you're not measuring with a measuring cup, which is perfectly fine. Um, so I'm gonna start with about a quarter of a cup of my bubble bath. And then what you do is you mix in your scents into the bubble bath first. So I chose um, a lavender and a lemon verbena perfume oil because I love the smell of lavender and lemon together and I just wanted to enhance the smell of the lavender a little bit. Mm. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a couple of drops. I have these um, little droppers. Just a couple of drops. You don't need a lot because they are strong and this is a small recipe. on it would be catastrophic if it spilled it's happened to me before it's hard to clean up and then your whole life smells and then you can use some um, coloring I'm using a soap safe powder mica um, actually I'm gonna add this in later so what you could do if you want your dough to be one uniform color you can add it in now you could also use food coloring but food coloring sometimes stains a little bit um, and I'd rather use the mica that I know is definitely soap and skin safe um, again, this just came from Amazon or any place that sells soap supplies online. There are so many. Um, 
but if you want it to be like a fun marbled effect, you can mix in your mica later when we have the dough. I think I'm gonna do that because I think that might be fun. So I'm gonna have this, I'm just going to mix my oil in with my, oh, it smells so good, and with my bubble bath, it smells amazing. I love the smell of lemon and lavender together. A plus. You can do, and you don't even need to scent it. If your bubble bath is already scented, you don't need to scent it. But I, like I said, I wanted to enhance it a little bit. All right, so the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to add your coconut oil. Um, mine is pretty soft because it's been warm in the building. Um, if it's not soft or melted, you should melt it in the microwave. Um, if it's solid, you're not going to be able to mix it in. But mine is pretty warm, so I'm going to be able to mix it in pretty easily. So I'm going to do that. And then you mix the cornstarch in to make your dough. I'm going to mix this in first, kind of make sure it gets... See, mine is really nice and soft. And it's going to mix in really easily. Oh, it smells so good. in uh, my corn starch and so you're gonna start with about half a cup and if it doesn't form into a dough then you're gonna add about another quarter of a cup just until it pulls away and it starts to form a dough because we don't want to make oobleck if you've ever made oobleck before it's where you have definitely a lot more liquid to corn starch that's not bath time play dough so we're gonna start with our corn starch and we're just gonna mix it and see what happens. So see, this is coming together, but it's still very pasty, so we need some more cornstarch. This is also really fun for kids, not just teens and adults. Kids would love to help you mix this. Um, you might not want them touching the oils and everything, but they may have a really good time with the mixing. It's also a really good sensory experience for them, both the mixing and the actual dough. So you can give this as a gift to kids too, and um, with adult supervision, they may have a really good time using it on something like a water table or just in their own bath. It's a really great sensory item. <laughs> this is so much fun and it feels really good and it smells really good and the whole process of making it is pretty soothing right now and I'm enjoying myself. Okay, so this is pretty nice and solid. So I'm going to decide what color I would like to do, and then I'm going to um, mix it up with the color. Maybe I'll split it in half, so maybe I can't like a really nice marbled effect. I don't know how how the mica mixes in. I've used mica before um, for soap, which is really easy to mix in, but not a dough, so we'll see. I have a whole bunch of pretty shiny colors. I did lavender. I'm gonna go for purple. Just start with a little. Kind of like the cornstarch a little bit at first and see where you gotta go from there. Okay, so I think I mixed this pretty well. There's still some marbling to it, but it's just the way it is. But look at the nice color contrast between the two. I'm just gonna kind of 
mesh them together so I have a really pretty marbled dough. And I made it all myself for only a couple of dollars. And I can make, with the ingredients that I have that I only spent a couple dollars on, I can make so many more. Like I said, you can make it for friends, you can make it for kids, use it as a gift. Uh, birthdays, holidays. So see, look, this like very pretty marble dough. And so when you go to use your dough, you're only going to take about like a tablespoon worth. You don't really need that much. And you're going to make some bubbles. And when you are not using this, you can store it in a little Tupperware container, a mason jar, whatever it is that you would like. Um, keep it dry. So make sure it's something that has a good lid on it. And uh, this, should, this ball of dough should last you for a while. So that's my dough. I'm gonna keep it in this bowl for right now. It should be okay, it won't dry out. Uh, the next one that we're going to make stores really easily in a mason jar. I know everyone loves mason jars or any kind of glass jar that you wanna reuse. Um, I know a lot of the yogurts come in cute little glass jars. If you have a candle that you melted down and you cleaned out, you could reuse that glass jar, whatever you have, so you can easily recycle something that you have and repurpose it into your special little spa care package. Um, so the next one we're going to make is really simple. It's just a fragrance oil, perfume oil, or a essential oil, and two ingredients. One of these is oat flour, and the other is coconut milk powder. You could use, um, I know some soap outlets have things like um, powdered goat milk powder. You could use something like that. Like That's in a lot of soap bases. Um, and then also, if you don't know where to find oat flour, you can get it. I got this from a bath uh, supply place, but you can get it at some health food stores. But you can also get colloidal oatmeal and grind it in a coffee grinder yourself. That's really easy, just get colloidal oatmeal anywhere. Um, and then like I said, your perfume or um, essential oil fragrance. So we're gonna get started with this once I open these all up. I love opening new supplies. It feels like a holiday. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get started with this one. Uh, this one's a really, really simple recipe, but it feels so good. The oatmeal is really good for your skin, for moisture, for healing. That's why we take oatmeal baths when we have like the chicken pox or something like that. And the coconut milk, again, adds moisture and oil. It has vitamins and minerals in it, so does the oatmeal. It's just really good for your skin and it's really soothing. And of course, you add the fragrance to whatever you would like. Okay, so we're gonna get started. This one is so easy. It's just equal parts coconut milk powder and oat flour. So you can make as much or as little as you want and as much or as little for what you have storage for. So if you only have a tiny little container, a Tupperware, a glass container, you start with a small batch. If you have a big thing like a mason jar, you're gonna make a big batch. So what you do is you just do one to one, mix these together in a bowl, and then you add your fragrances or essential oils. It's so easy. So I'm just gonna do this by spoonfuls. So I'm just going to mix these together first before I add my fragrances. I just want to make sure that everything is well combined. I'm going to use my hands here too. There we go, to break this up. That's much easier. Um, coconut has a lot of fat and oil in it. Um, of course, the healthy, wonderful, good kind of fat. So it will probably, yours will probably also be kind of clumped like this. Um, and it's just very easy to break up and it smells really, really wonderful in here right now between the oils from the Play-Doh, the oils that I have ready for this one, the coconut milk powder. This is also really nice to mix by hand. It's so soft and soothing. So I'm just gonna make sure that everything is well combined, get rid of any chunks. Okay, so again, I'm gonna grab my dropper and I have um, two different fragrances that I decided to use for this one. I have a cashmere fragrance oil. It just smells really cozy. Um, it's actually from a Huga set of oil, so everything that's in there is supposed to remind you of like home and cozy and happiness. Um, and I decided to pair it up with just a little bit of smoky patchouli to kind of play with the warm, deep undertones of the cashmere. I love mixing fragrance oils. I love making soap. It's something that I do for fun as a hobby, which is why I love doing these kinds of crafts with everybody. So I'm gonna do more of the cashmere than the smoky patchouli, but still you only need a couple of drops. The recipe calls for about 20 drops total 
um, if you're using more. I'm using, I probably did about half of this recipe, so I'm going to do 10. I'm going to do seven of the cashmere and three of the smoky patchouli. If you're not sure if something is gonna smell really good together, you can just open it up like this and kind of smell them together. You can also do, some people call it like the plastic wrap or plastic bag trick, and you can spread out some plastic wrap and spread a couple of drops of the ones that you wanna combine together. Fold your plastic wrap, kind of mush them up, and then smell inside of your plastic wrap. What does it smell like? You can do that in a plastic bag too, um, but if you know me, I find that to be wasteful. I don't like using plastic bags for that, so I just kind of try to sniff it out myself and see what will happen. So now I'm going to just mix this all together, disperse these drops evenly. You don't want to see the wetness remaining, you really just want everything to be combined. So the fragrance in this is definitely more subtle because the oatmeal and the coconut kind of absorb it, but it's really nice. You can always, again, add more fragrance if you would like, add less, add none, whatever it is. This will keep in a mason jar for quite a while. Um, you're going to use, depending on how big your bathtub is, um, probably like, do you're gonna do it by the tablespoons. I'd say probably like four tablespoons for a bathtub for, you know, like a regular size, three to four tablespoons, um, four to five if you have a much larger bathtub. And so this will definitely last you for a while, keep it in an airtight container, and it will stay uh, for quite a while. You wanna make sure that you don't get any water in it. The thing about bath and body products is that once you start to introduce water, that's when people need to use preservatives. That's why a lot of our store-bought bath and body products like this contain preservatives because they need water. Um, whether it's part of the formula or if it's to bulk it up and make it bigger, water is how bacteria grows. If you don't get any water in this, you should be able to keep this for a couple of months and it should be good. So, you know, when you're not using it, make sure that you store it under the sink, on a shelf, in your linen closet, as long as it's not going to get wet by being uh, in your shower or hanging out on the edge of your tub. I have one more recipe. This one is also really simple. This one here. I'm gonna get myself a clean bowl. Okay, so I'm going to move on. I have a nice big bag here of mineral dead sea salts. And I got it in a coarse grain. This is a nice big bag. Um, so how is this different from Epsom salts? So the thing about mineral dead sea salts and Epsom salts is that Epsom salts are actually not salts at all. It's um, magnesium and so it's soothing for your muscles. Dead sea salts are filled with other minerals. Um, they're actually salt and it's more for detoxing. Um, for pu pulling impurities out of your body and also holds on to um, scent better than Epsom salts. Um, you can also use these nice coarse grains to form a scrub, which is really nice. Uh, if you wanted to make a scrub, you would just mix the dead sea salt with some coconut oil and your fragrances and it just makes a really nice exfoliating scrub while again pulling out some impurities from your skin. So I'm going to go ahead and just add however many of these uh, scoops of this nice coarse grain as I want. You can also mix dead sea salts with Epsom salts. Um, it's not a salt overload because like I said, Epsom salts are not actually salt. Um, and it would be really soothing to both your muscles and just your body overall. So what you do with this one, again, this one is really simple, is you just need a little bit of fragrance, 
some coloring again you don't have to use coloring but I think this is gonna look really lovely and then something else that's really nice when you're taking a long soaking bath is some dried um, flowers I'm gonna do rose buds um, it'll look beautiful it makes a wonderful gift as well okay I found a few I'm going to sniff them all together and see if I like them I did so let's see what did I get I got English rose vanilla select white tea and ginger and vanilla rosewood I made sure to bring out two vanilla scents because I do want to tell you that if you are making something with a vanilla fragrance oil just like how your vanilla extract is brown your vanilla oils will discolor over time so just because you see something that has a vanilla oil or even if it doesn't say vanilla on it sometimes those foodie scents things that smell like cake or buttercream they have vanilla in their fragrance you may see them discolor that is normal that does not mean that they have gone bad you're gonna look for signs like moisture and mold something that goes bad I remember we're using natural uh, all natural ingredients so like I said like with with this you know maybe keep it for three months um, three to six months I would say as long as no moisture gets into it so I'm gonna sniff these I'm gonna see what I think my combination will be I'm gonna say no to the rosewood because the wood note is very strong and I don't think that's where I'm going today. So I'm gonna sniff these three together, which is my English rose, vanilla select, and white tea and ginger and see how it smells. I think it's good. I think I'm going to do more of the white tea and ginger and vanilla and less of the English rose because it is, um, floral scents are very, very strong, so. Kind of like to be cautious with that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with just a few drops of my English rose. I'm gonna say probably overall I'm going to use maybe 30 drops. Um, obviously you're gonna do more if you have more it's just proportional to whatever you have. So I'm gonna start with just a couple of this English rose. smell it oh it smells very spa like this is good I'm still getting some soft buttery notes of the vanilla but the white tea and ginger is really clean and refreshing but it still smells like rose so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another mica powder and you're just gonna use very sparingly the mica powder in this um, but I'm going to use I guess I'll use the cherry one just just a little bit just to kind of make it rosy I barely used any and it's really coloring the salts so you don't need that much coloring I don't think for this that I would recommend something like food coloring or liquid coloring. You don't want to dissolve your salt crystals. And I'm going to add my rose petals. are honestly a little messy to clean out of the bath so I don't know if you feel like it's worth it but if you want to feel like you're at a spa when right now you're definitely not going to a spa this is the way to be I'm going to pour this in my jar so you can see how beautiful it looks and why I think you should gift it to yourself and all of your friends Look at that, that's beautiful. What a lovely gift that is to myself.
Okay, so that's it. Those are our three self-care bath and body products that we made today. You can have so much fun with them. I have gotten so many people hooked on bath and body DIYs. And it's so much fun. And you know, you can, again, either use essential oils or you can go ahead and find fragrance oils online at any of these um, soap companies. I'll put a couple links in the description of where I got my supplies if you are curious. Um, but there, there are not a lot of rules. Like I showed you, these ingredients are really easy to get, whether you're buying them online or at the grocery store. And it's so much fun and it's so soothing and they make a really nice gift for yourself and for your friends and family, for holidays, for birthdays, for whatever it is. Um, and then we have our bubble dough, which I can't wait to play with. Again, remember, it's only about a tablespoon each time. Of course, if you need more bubbles, you can try to add more. But of course, be careful if you're doing this with kids. You don't want your tub to get slippery. You just want to watch how they're dissolving it. You don't want to just toss it in, and if they stand up, it might they might slip. So make sure you're running it right underneath the faucet as the water is running. And um, if you're not sharing it with kids, no adult supervision required. Have fun. This one smells so good, too. So that's it. Let me know if you try any of these things. Um, let me know if you give them as gifts, if you use them for yourself, how you feel when you're done, how your skin feels. But there are so many scents out there. Like, you know, I have this rose, this vanilla, this ginger, the patchouli, the sandalwoods. Um, I have lingonberry over there, cashmere. I have cool water. I, there are so many different scents. Just have fun. You may find a new hobby while doing all of this. I hope you all enjoy. Let me know if you make anything fun. And you can share pictures or stories in the comments or email me. Uh, our emails are still on our homepage, or you can reach out here through Facebook. I would love to hear your stories about what you've created. All right, everyone, have fun, relax, and take care. Bye.